All right, guys. I'm gonna try something new today. Well, something new is not the right word. Um, looks to me like somebody else had put a different rear end in this car at one time. And uh, I'll show you here in a second. But I definitely have more room on the passenger side than I do the driver's side. Let me turn you around so you can see. Okay, so what I'm talking about is there's some weld marks here, which makes me wonder. Okay, so there's some weld marks here. That makes me wonder if this rear end was out of something else. It's like they were cut off. I could be wrong, but the problem I'm running into is the tire is not rubbing. But good lord, that's close. So it's not a big issue if we lose, you know, tire pressure, it's gonna bulge down here and not up there. But that's just, uh, that's really close for my taste. This side, what? I'm gonna put a finger in there. So, I'm assuming this is all welded in. It's hard to tell. Um, so it, it, it can't go far. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna loosen up all the, I'm gonna loosen these bolts. And I'm gonna get in here with a pry bar and just see if I can get myself even if I can get myself to like that, I'd be happy. Um, otherwise, yeah, see up there the the gap of the wheel well. That's about the same over here. It's a little bit more over here, a little closer, a little tighter. But um, if I can get myself just a little leeway, because even on this side. This side's got a little bit more room. Not much. It's because he's tapering. Ah, uh, so. Oh, that's all. Um, yeah, so. I'm gonna loosen up the nuts and see if I can gain myself eighth of an inch. Maybe an eighth of an inch. That'd be all right. Something happened there at some time. And who knows? Might have been when it was in. And I never did show you guys this. Let me turn you around again. So, uh, showed you that. And the reason we think that's because of a repair is you can see right here. You can see. They scabbed in a quarter panel starting up there down to here which is where that lead is and came across and out the back and then it looks like right about here is where they scabbed it in so yeah that's not enough something hit there hard and they fixed that I thought maybe just maybe the tire had gotten hit Maybe that messed up the rear end, but none of this has been damaged. There's no damage on any of this framing or any of that stuff. So, so yeah, that's uh, they might have put a different rear end in here. I mean, I don't know these kind of rear ends very well. Um, I thought this was a Ford nine inch. What do I know? I've never had a Ford nine inch, so I couldn't tell you. The only reason I was thinking that is because uh, it bolts on this side and the center comes out, but I guess that was common in the 50s. So this could be a, a factory rear end and, and who knows, something might have happened at one time. Uh, we don't know the history of this thing. Um, I know we'd spent in our family for 40 plus years. Sounded like a broken record. Uh, the reason I keep saying that is it's been with us the majority of its life. That doesn't mean the first year it didn't get in an accident. You know, back in 56. Um, how many cars have you seen brand new? Smashed up fender bendered and the repairs quality wasn't as good back then um and then somebody at one point might have you know when they customized it 
This might be a better rear end. I don't know rear ends, but in the 70s, it might have been considered a better rear end that they put in. Um, maybe there was a problem from the factory. Uh, they, you know, maybe five years after it hit the road, there was a problem. Who, who knows? Uh, I, I don't know why it looks like perches were cut off and different perches were put on. And it's, it's not perfect. And the offset of these tires, um, the offset that came off here, wasn't as wide. They were seven inch, and I think these rears are 10, 10 inch wide, nine inch wide. Um, so that offset goes deeper that way, which you know you'd have never noticed if you had no problem with the tires that were on there. So, okay, not me babbling. Let me loosen these up and uh, see what we can come up with. Yeah, it's even inside the wheel further. That should be enough to get that side. That I can live with. That gave me a little more. So, I can actually actually fit that in there so I'm gonna tighten that up right there and call that call that good plenty of room on the passenger side more room we're good now I mean that's tight don't get me wrong that is tight but it's probably more than an eighth of an inch. That's tight. All right, guys, so just did that little pull out and uh, steering really felt wonky compared to normal. And I wasn't, I wasn't ready to go for a test drive, so I, I didn't have the cameras inside the truck and inside the car. Ended up not going for the test drive because it's just, just pulling it out of here and uh, moving it around the parking lot a little bit. I was gonna switch cameras around and then put something inside and go for a test drive and thought well you know what I'm not gonna ruin these tires and I'm not gonna make I gotta make sure these tie rods are all back in properly I know I I know I tighten them down but it just the wheel this wheel especially felt a little little just wobbly and I was only going two miles an hour you know I mean like you turn the wheel and you could just feel it kind of do a little shimmy shake so um, I thought, well, my alignment's probably out of whack, so 
I just real quick laid down and and did a quick measurement and uh, the one wheel was about an inch out um, after everything settled and I moved so I cranked those back in and uh, seems like I, I got my alignment dialed back in pretty good but while I was down there my brother stopped over and I had him sit in the car while I was under there and just kind of move the steering wheel back and forth. I mean, it's, it's been loose since before I bought it. And I told you why, because of the power steering. And it just beats up them gearboxes. But it just seems to me that's a lot of beat up in that gearbox. And those tie rods, um, my personal opinion, don't feel, don't feel all uh, loosey. I mean, they feel fine. But I wanted to make sure with the tires on the ground and putting pressure to that manual box. Um, so I had my brother turning it back and forth and them tire rods don't budge. I mean, they look good under there. And I'm looking at the steering while he's doing it, what I can see. And I'll turn you around here in a second, but I didn't, I didn't see anything really with the box that looked wrong. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be somewhat loose, but I think I can fix, I think I found my major problem. And I don't know if I can fix it, I think I can. Um, Got to do a little more research, but I'm going to tear it apart and see what I'm looking at. Let me turn it around. So what we're looking at here is the control valve for that power assist. My dad capped these off. That's where the power steering hoses went. One went in and then back out to the ram, and that's what controlled back and forth. And while this is your center link, right? And I don't know if this is different or not from uh, a power assisted one, because I know, I know it's a little different. I don't know if I can change it back or not. So these are where my, the power steering lines came out, in and out, and went to the ram that was on the other side. And this is your control valve that controls how much pressure you're actually putting on the steering to tell the ram that was on the other side that we talked about earlier, how hard to push or pull. Without that, this just connects and has an end plate here, usually, from what I understand. I think this end piece here is different on the power steering versus the manual. But I'm laying underneath here and I'm, I'm watching when my brother was turning the steering back and forth. He's gone now, you know, because I ended up putting it back up on the lift. Um, this was moving like, I don't know if this is an exaggeration, it's hard to tell, but he would turn the steering wheel and it would move to here before the rod would move. I mean, it was a good half an, nah, maybe not quite a half an inch, maybe like three eighths of an inch, this way. And then he'd turn it the other way and it, the whole wheel would go and then it would center and then it would go to here before anything started moving. I'm thinking this is worn out in here. I know they make a rebuild kit for him. I need to do a little more research when I convert this to power steering. But what I'm thinking is, when the wheels move, it's just got all this slap before it even hitches, hits the steering, before this ever catches up and gives you feedback to the steering wheel. So that's the wonkiness I was feeling. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take this off. I think it's just these two bolts and then this comes off. And I think there's a spring in here and a set screw. And it's, when I say a set screw, it's like a threaded cap that goes to this whole tube that I think you can tighten that and put more pressure on the springs. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what this was for because they even have this on the manual ones. This is the extra part for power steering or power assist. But on the manual ones, I think it was just like a cushion, like having a shock in there because it's spring loaded. That gives you a little more of a comfortable ride. Tell me down below if you know better. Um, I'm sure I'll figure it out and learn here, but uh, I'm gonna tear this off. I don't need it anyways. It's just extra garbage in my way. Might be able to sell it with the other stuff that I got. Um, if somebody's looking to do a factory restoration. But uh, yeah, I am going to, oh, there's a set there too. I gotta dig into this a little more. If I can get better lighting, I'll bring it with me. Otherwise, I'll show you what I find out. All right, I got it apart. And after looking at it, it's definitely different than the manual ones. It's not just a proportioning um, control valve added to the end. It's a separate piece. I'll show you what that looks like. 
and then explain what we're doing. So I unbolted it, and that's the valve from the inside. And it has to come off here, which tells me the insides are different than the manual. So I'm going to put that back together. But see, this threads on. This is what's different than the manual one. You can see right there, it threads on like a tie rod end. Like an adjuster sleeve. It threads on the end of this center link. So what I'm going to do, take the nut off here, undo this. Got to get this down. Unscrew the whole thing. Because what they make <laughs> is a power control valve to manual. The manual, factory manual steering doesn't have that end. It's solid, one piece. But it still has the spring loaded like I was talking about that I thought was adjustable. Um, a ball that sits on the end of your idler arm and goes in and it's clamped on both sides and it's spring loaded and it kind of holds it uh, again I, i'm assuming it's to take out some of the jarringness make it more comfortable riding these bellers back in the day technology so what i'm assuming is because power juice goes into that control valve it may or may not put pressure on that idler arm ball that goes in there and by not running the pressure through there that's what's allowing that idler to move back and forth before the steering ever goes um, or it's just wore out i don't know so i ordered went online and looked and yeah there's no, no way for me to adjust that i'm assuming because it's power it's either wore out like i said or the pressure isn't holding everything firm and in my browser it popped up this ability to convert from um, factory power to manual and why would I do that would you say well because I'm not gonna do the power assist and if I convert this to the 500 series power steering gearbox um, which I would like to do eventually I can drive it as a manual steering car as long as it's not unsafe because everything's so loose and wonky. But if I do the box, they say you can't do the box straight to a power steering center link or drag link, which is what that control valve is attached to. They said you want to you know, switch to a manual center link. Or this little conversion popped up. And basically, it's the exact same thing as that. It screws on the end, but it has the guts of a manual. It's like 70 bucks. So hopefully that'll be here this week coming. Um, I'd like to have this drivable to take it to a car show next weekend. So hopefully it shows up in time that I can get it done and take it for a test drive. Nothing goes as fast as you plan, guys. It's crazy. So that's where we're at. So I'm going to put that back together and... Uh, get that ready to take out so the new one's ready to just bolt right in um i ain't taking it out till the piece comes because if it ain't right or the something's wrong with the dimensions this still steers um that being loose doesn't gonna fall apart it's captured but i gotta be able to move this thing in and out of the garage until i figure out how to fix it if that piece don't work so ebay had it eckler's had it, it was like 90 dollars plus 10 dollars shipping so it'd have been 100 bucks um, Speedway had it. It was $92 with $7 shipping, so it would have been 99 bucks. <laughs> and eBay had it for it was 60, $63, and with tax and everything shipped to the house, free shipping, it was going to be $70, bucks, uh, 71 bucks. so with tax and everything. That's what we're doing, guys. There's your update. Hopefully the next time you see me, I'll be putting that on and we'll be going for a ride and hooting and hollering that we fixed the problem. I, I can't believe my dad drove this with it loose like that for as long as he did. And he said, yeah, it kind of happened after I took the power steering apart. That's what just got me thinking about it. Um, when I was feeling everything underneath there and this tie rod engine didn't seem to be getting loose or anything. Uh, when my brother was 
moving it back and forth and Tyron ends up fine. I'm like, geez. And I can't believe that gearbox would be completely worn out. If this speedometer rolled, this car's got 170 on it or 160 on it, I don't think it has. Um, again, we've had it for 45 years and we're lucky if we put 1,500 miles a year on it because we used to take it on trips into car shows and the Nomad Nationals and stuff like that. Um, so during the summer, you'd put maybe 1,000, 1,500 miles on it. But then they moved down here to Florida 18 years ago, and he's lucky if he's put 200 miles on it in 18 years. So we're lucky if we put 20,000 miles on this car since he bought it. I, I, to be honest, it's probably more like 10,000 miles since they bought it. In the 80s, so it's 30 years old. People didn't drive to but 3,000 miles a year in the 50s and 60s. So, I don't know. Could be a factory 60, 70,000 mile car. Or it could have been rolled over. And, and as rust free and as how unbeat up the, the vehicle is and everything, I mean, it's very possible it's 60,000. So, not that it matters. My point is, I just find it hard to believe that a manual gearbox is that beat up. So, I think it's, I think it's that. Hopefully, hopefully, if anything, if it cuts it in half, the amount of slop, I can live with that until I can afford to put the gearbox on. So, right now, the budget's tight, and we've spent the budget money. I've got some money left over for some little incidentals, like this piece here. And uh, I'm going to start stacking. I don't have the power steering hoses like I thought I did. I forgot we, we modified those for my brother's vehicle. So, I mean, i got to buy power steering hoses, and i got to buy... The, the gearbox um, to convert this to power steering. Well, let's do this first and see what we got. Make sure everything's good. Drive it a bit. Hopefully I have saved up enough money to do the next bit. On a budget. That's what we're doing. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Um, the power steering box, I think I said in one of the other videos, uh, I found it cheaper than everybody else. Everybody else wants like 600 bucks, 700 bucks, like the Speedway and all that. Um, on average, you can buy just the gearbox for like 450, and I found it for like 370. Well, guess what? I found brand new, not remanned, on eBay. I, I don't know where they're made. <laughs> Take the other grain of salt. But they have a high, high rating. Uh, 224 bucks delivered to the shop. So. Uh, for that price, we're definitely going to be doing that. And being I have to do this conversion to the manual so that the power steering, everything lines up, um, we're getting there one piece at a time. All right, guys, when that piece comes in, what should be like, oh, and while we're at it, I probably haven't shown you this, so uh, this is what I'm fighting with. There... That is just engaging to go right. And then that huge gap there. So from there to there, and that's just engaging to go left. So it's got this much that the suspension's moving by itself under there and the steering wheel don't move. It's tough to drive. I've had cars where you, you have to do this, you know, and there's that much play in it, which is, that's maybe an inch. This is like, I mean, from here, this point. I mean, that is almost the, the gap between these two rivets. I mean, there's a rivet there and here. It's past it. That other rivet would have been here, so I can measure that, but that's, that's at least five inches. Uh, that's way unsafe and way no good. So if that piece we're buying fixes that, that'll be a big, big help. Um, maybe we'll only have this much play instead of that much play. So, I don't know, I probably didn't show you that before, so. Nah, you know, okay. Waiting on that piece to come in. Next time you see me, we'll be uh, dealing with that. Um, it's on order, a couple of days. Haven't got tracking on it yet, so we'll see you then. All right, guys. Parts, or part, came in. We're waiting on. 
This is a uh, eBay special, but it looks exactly the same as what Jegs has, what Speedway has, what everybody has. I'm assuming there's only one place that makes them. Um, this is the piece that's going to replace our power steering assist control valve. So I got to screw the old one off and screw this one on. And it's <laughs> I, hope, I hope I don't have to break a taper too hard with this uh, for the uh, idle arm, pitman arm, whatever that is. I always get those two mixed up. One's on one side, one's on the other. But the one that comes off the power steering box, um, this is going to go to that. So this is very spring-loaded. This is what I thought I could adjust on the other one. This is what I thought I was adjusting. See, so it's a screw. And then you set it. And this sets the tension in there. Um, this actually will sit, this is the driver's side, it'll sit like this, and that power control valve, uh, power steering control valve, I thought unbolted off of this, and it's probably very similar. Um, with power fluid going into that control valve, I'm sure it takes up what the spring does and creates that tension, but being that my dad eliminated the power steering pump and all that stuff a long time ago, um, that's probably why this slaps back and forth. This is the piece that when you turn the wheel and it does this before anything catches, this is just going back and forth before it actually shoves the piece. You know, it's moving from here to here and then moving this, and then moving from here to here and then moving this. So, fingers, what do they say? You know, the, <laughs> hopefully that'll fix my slop in the steering. And if that's the case, Fix the slop in the steering. It's drivable, no power steering. Safely, hit the brakes and the front end isn't gonna go. Ah. And then when I get around to putting power steering gearbox in, um, all of our suspension pieces will be ready to accept it. So, all right. next day all right guys it's next day sorry i didn't film it um a little on the agitated side <laughs> yeah i got my bump hat on because uh well you saw in the last video <laughs> one video <laughs> i smacked my head i'm done doing that underneath here that's why i bought this and, and yeah for you don't don't know it's a bump hat it's got hard hat in it so it can work under the lift and no brim because i kept bumping that into stuff too so i got a brimless ball cap put the bump in it protect my melon Okay, so I got this. This is too small. No matter what I did with this, it just slide off on there. You saw me try this one. This one's too big. I kept sliding off sideways. Checked around. Nobody had a bigger one than the small one, and nobody had a smaller one than the bigger one. And I decided, screw it. Get the pickle fork out. Ran that up in there. That didn't do it. That was, uh, it got nice and stuck. And my agitation kicked in, and I grabbed the big old dead nabbit, and I gave it a one, one good solid whack. And with the pressure the pickle fork was putting on it, and a whack with this, it popped apart. Sorry I didn't film it, because uh, it's kind of entertaining. So, turn it around. Broke free, so next is that comes out. The other one comes in. She sets you down somewhere so you can watch. If you're so inclined. All right, let me get after it. Nine. Shoulders are burning. Bad shoulders, guys. We talked about that before. Whew. I need to start getting some more exercise in them, though. I feel healed, but just damaged. Some work out will uh, hopefully fix that. That was nine. Okay.
22, 22 and a half. Okay. Let's see where this one starts threading first. you don't know blew my rotator cuff super spinatus tendon in my left shoulder during COVID and then a year and a half ago I pulled the exact same tendon in my right shoulder but at least I knew ahead of time what it was I was able to get the proper care medication quickly before it really got bad because this one I waited six months and by the time I got it fixed, it was it took two years to heal. Um, I had frozen shoulder, couldn't lift my arms above my head. Uh, this one, I got about 80% of the motion back in this one, 75%. I only lost about 20% in this one and got 10% back, so I'm down 10%, but the pain still, this one's the fresh one. Still gets pain when I over, over exert it. And, I haven't been able to do any exercises or workouts to keep strength in it because it hurts too much. So it just gets uh, dilapidated, <laughs> emaciated, all those aided words. Just got to let that burning go away, which is probably a good thing. This isn't a pain like ow, ow, pain, I'm hurting stuff. It's ow, ow, pain, it's weak and, and uh, hasn't done this motion in quite a long, ooh, quite a long time. So it might be good for it. All right, 10 more to go. 15, I feel like I'm past it. Maybe it's in a different spot than that. I haven't moved any of this. It should just drop right in now. Looks like it's lined up to drop in. One too far. A few moments later. One hour later. There it is, guys. You see how many threads? I mean, still on 15 turns. Had six more to go. Uh, but that would have put it way over here and I just let it naturally line up with the hole. We'll see how that works. Uh, might be able to put more pressure on it. I don't know how that works. That was not moving. On that, the new one, this thing, straight out. This is a ball in here. And it's under pressure in, th in, th in that one it's under pressure by a heavy spring right here. This one, the, the fluid tube and a spring. And then, which would put more pressure on this. Because right now, I mean, that's pretty effortless. And it's just spinning. It still ain't moving nothing. I can do that without this moving. This is supposed to just take up, it's supposed to be held in there hard and when you steer and push on that, it's supposed to push this way and push that way with very little flex. And if I can do that with my hand just easy, obviously there was something wrong with it. So going to the manual one, fingers crossed, I'll take you up into, we'll look at the steering wheel again and see what's going on. All right guys, I don't know. Saw in the previous video, me moving the steering wheel. <laughs> fingers crossed. Watched. Sort of. uh, 
Let's see if the steering wheel's got the same amount of slop in it. Let me turn it around. Still too much. Damn. And yes, I've adjusted the gearbox. It's adjusted all the way. Well, I guess that gearbox is just flat, plumb, wore out. It's definitely an improvement. Because before, you can see these little dots on here. I don't know if you can see them in the camera or not. These little dots that go around the steering wheel, they're equally spaced. And before, when I turned the wheel, right, right here, um, I can feel it starting to engage. And there it's starting to engage. And before, it went from this dot to above the dot above it. So I moved from my thumb, the steering wheel moved all the way to where my finger is, right there. Let me see if I can line that up with that piece of trim. And let me move my thumb now. It stops there. So I gained this much less slop. If that makes sense. Uh, so it's an improvement. Still quite a bit there though. I was hoping it'd be not so lucky. All right. All right. Well, that's it. Either way, that other piece was wore out. Can't be used. Needs fluid in it to work properly. Um, and if we convert to power steering gearbox, we need to do what we just did anyways. So I'm going to play around a little bit with the gearbox adjuster again because it's been oh, probably eight years since I messed with that because it was before I actually owned it. I drove it for the first time, but a year before I bought it and uh, was really surprised at how horrible the steering was and I thought I could do something about it. And uh, I believe it's adjusted too far. Uh, it's not adjusted too far. The adjustment has been moved as far as you can possibly go, which means the gearbox is shot. Okay, not me rambling about the same shit over. Uh, let me get the hood open. We'll give her, a, we'll give her a look and see what we're working with. All right, just so you know what I'm talking about. For those who don't know, that's our gearbox, and that set nut and screw in the middle. On a decent one, it should be flush. It's about two threads below flush. You're gonna have to take my word on it. Best I can do, folks. You can see it's not flush, it's below. A perfectly good one that's been untouched is probably two threads above this nut. I'm gonna give that, I'm gonna break this loose, give that a couple wiggles and turns and see if I can just take up some of the slack there. On these uh, gearboxes, I have another manual that we took out of the 55, my brothers. And I could probably take those three bolts out, pull that out, replace the worm gear with the other one. And the reason I say replace the other one, why not just put the other one in? Because in 55 through 7, I don't know how much later or how much earlier, the steering shaft for this is permanently connected. There's no rag joint, there's no universal joint. It literally, let's see it down there, the spring is. That spring is, that's coming out of the box and into our steering column. And that goes all the way up to the nut. One long, continuous rod. So yeah, sorry for the interruption there. Um, so yeah, the, the Nomad was supposed to be the one that was up and that was the one that was gonna be down and movable and blah, 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 story of my life. So now, at, at the very least, this one's movable, barely, barely drivable. I just don't trust that steering column. Um, I, I don't like how wiggly it is. That much of a that much of a slop. It, uh, you know, I, I stand on these disc brakes and it pulls hard one way or it pulls hard the other way when it decides to want to. I don't want to do uh, an alignment on it just yet because if I'm going to be putting a new steering box in, I'm going to run into the same problem that it may not line up like the old one did, and I'm going to have to have another alignment done. So I want to wait till all that. It's drivable right now, 
Whereas I can move it in and out of the shop around the parking lot, up and down the back road here for fun. Um, but that's about it. I, I don't, I don't see driving 20 miles to a car show or anything like that just yet. So next thing will be uh, steering box. I, I don't know when that's going to happen. One step closer, guys. Like all projects. Two thousand years later. All right, guys. Oh, just a little uh, tweaking today on the old Mazmad. So, you know, in the previous videos, I was showing you that uh, the wheel was awful close to the leaf springs there on one side. Let me uh, bring you up to speed on what I'm talking about for those of you who haven't seen it. So this side, the new wheels, we got plenty of room. We got plenty of room there. And this side, <laughs> it ain't rubbing. You can see, it ain't rubbing. Let's run the tire around. I sprayed with some weight, or we lose some air pressure. It's gonna be close. So, that's what I'm doing, I'm gonna put a spacer in there. Somebody must have put this rear end at one time. There's some weird welds. Go back and watch the other video um, where we kind of go over a few things. Um, I think it's even in on the the uh, disc brake video. I tried moving, shifting the axle, doing a few things, and it really didn't do much. So I don't need much room, just a little bit. So let me turn you around and show you what we got. I went ahead and bought these. Wheel spacer. Eighth inch. All right. There's the uh, part number. It is an eighth of an inch. Uni kind of universal. But it does fit four and three quarter, which is what we got. So hopefully this will fit. It's aluminum. I don't need much. Don't need much. So let me uh, squeeze into my little cubby hole here and uh, pull that tire off. And we'll go ahead and uh, put that spacer on and, and hope it gives us enough. All I need is an eighth of an inch. I probably got an eighth of an inch now. Sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> um, an eighth of an inch will give us plenty. So. I don't want to push them out too far and I don't want to uh, have low amount of threads on the lug nut, you know, for the lug nuts to grab onto. So. Eleven pounds of it in a two pound box. That's what it's like to work in one. And I'm one of the 11 pounds that tries to squeeze in here. I'm just glad I have a shot. At least I have one. A place to work. And store my stuff. Let's see what it looks like. It's got these little double ones here. Pretty much, right there is pretty much centered, so it'll center up probably. I don't think there's any other way to it's kind of the same deal. Looks a little off center to me there, and then we're right back to where we were. It looks like it. All right, guys, let me show you what that did. So, much gooder. Let's see the space in there's a lot better now. I ain't got to worry about that rubbing at all. This side. Much gooder. So, the only problem we ran into, what I'm not too thrilled about, sorry, something, guys, is, uh, those lug nuts, you lost an eighth of an inch of threading on, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I guess it is with these wheels because literally when I was hand threading them on, they uh, started to get tight with one turn by hand. 
So I'm thinking there's maybe three, four threads total holding them where before it was probably seven or eight. We probably lost a third of the, uh, the ability to screw those on. Probably lost a third. So again, I don't feel real safe. I don't need to be driving around and have my rear tire pass me or tear up the quarter panel on this or, you know, anything stupid like that. So I'm going to probably here in the future, pull that back off, pop one of the studs out and see if I can find another stud. That's uh, the same thing, but um, well, at least an eighth of an inch longer. If not, I'd like a little bit more than that. Because this had the craggers on it before. And I don't know if this is, you know, again, if these studs have been changed over the years. Um, we bought it with the craggers on it. And the craggers have the lug nut that goes through the wheel. So it gets lots of, lots of thread engagement. This, the wheel sits here. This goes down the lug nut all the way and then sits, you know, obviously you don't want it bottomed out on the drum. So if these are properly sized, they go all the way through and then there's a gap so that you can torque them and they don't bottom out. Lots of thread engagement. Conical, which is what this is, um, the threads have to come out far enough. And this just sits on the rim. There's no extra. So I don't know if the lugs had been changed on this at some time. Um, I noticed it before I did the spacer and I didn't really think about it when I was doing the spacer that we had, we had thread engagement. Um, but it seemed a little shallow to me. They seemed to tighten up fairly quick. Not bad. I, I could have lived with it. I wouldn't have changed the studs. Um, but having put the spacer on the one side, and then putting the lugs on there feels to me like I want to put a longer stud on. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do a longer stud. I'll probably do a quarter inch longer. Uh, that way I'll feel better about it. Take some measurements here and see if a quarter inch is going to be too much to uh, over engage these lug nuts. But uh, yeah, that'll be our next thing. But that is all for this. You don't need to see all that. I'll tell you about it in one of the next videos when we get closer to driving this thing and actually taking it for a spin, and I'll take you for a spin and um, see if we have a victory or not. So let me know if you like Mozmad. Um, you want to see more of what's going on because the next video will probably be the, the steering column, uh, putting in the new power steering box. Got some more stuff coming on this. Um been doing a little here and there, not enough for a whole video. So I'm collaging together bits and pieces of things that have been going on with this. And uh, I tell you what, good thing I bought it thinking there was no motor in it. I'd be rather, I'd be really mad right now. But we're not going to get into that here. Uh, that'll be an upcoming video. Register. Register. <laughs> if you want to see more of this content, please. It helps me out a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe down below. Hit that like and notification button. See more stuff that's up and coming. You'll be notified when we're doing more stuff on the Dragon Wagon. Um, that should be coming up here fairly soon. And uh, hopefully be getting that all dialed in with the new power steering box fairly soon. And uh, right now the budget's all about this. But we are going to be tearing into this. Um, and finding out what it's going to cost us to put it back together. So thanks for watching guys. And don't forget, don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it. What's that mean? Don't tear down every nut and bolt, plan on doing a frame off restoration, paint job, interior and everything. It'll take you 10 years and you'll lose interest. And then you'll wonder why if you've got this disassembled car in your driveway or in your garage for 10 years of wasting money. Do a little something, whether it be get it driving better, get it braking and steering better, um, fix some wiring, whatever it is. Do one step, go out and drive it, enjoy it, remind yourself how much you like that car, then put it in the shop and do the next step.
That way, you stay motivated. That way, it doesn't break the bank and kill you and wonder why you spent $50,000 rebuilding something when you can just do it in $2,000, $1,500 increments because of uh, the economy the way it is. That's how it is nowadays. Stuff that used to cost four or 500 bucks to upgrade is now $1,500. So we have to do it in stages, guys. We're not making more money, but we still love hot rodding. All right, guys. Till next time. Keep wrenching.